Hello everyone. One day, a little boy, dirty from playing in the mud, comes home and asks his mother, Who am I, mom? The mother, thinking that her son perhaps wants to play a game, says, I don't know. Who are you? Wow! The boy shouts excitedly and says, Our neighbor is right. He said that I am so dirty that even my mom would not recognize me. Friends, our family and friends may ignore and reject us if you are unfaithful, disloyal, disobedient. In other words, unclean and dirty. But God our Father welcomes us back as His children because He is merciful and kind. Today's second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Who is Timothy? Timothy is a close friend of Paul and a fellow believer. He accompanies Paul on his missionary journeys to many places and eventually becomes a leader of the Christian community at Ephesus. Paul, who is in Macedonia, hears about some problems regarding gospel teaching, worship, material goods and leadership in the Ephesian church. And he is concerned that the, the problems would make a young preacher like Timothy anxious and discouraged. He wants to be sure that Timothy would not become disillusioned with his Christian life. So he writes to encourage Timothy to follow the Lord courageously and serve the church faithfully in spite of all the problems he is facing. He urges Timothy to be strong in what he believes. Paul encourages Timothy by citing his own life as an example of what Jesus can do through his mercy and grace. Paul starts this section of his letter with thanksgiving. He writes, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. Friends, Paul gives thanks to Jesus Christ for three things. 1. Paul thanks Jesus Christ for choosing him for the gospel ministry. He is deeply conscious that God has chosen him and given him a special task. 2. Paul thanks Jesus Christ for trusting him, even though he was a zealous persecutor of the followers of Christ, he believes that Jesus Christ has forgiven him and entrusted him with preaching the good news. 3. Paul thanks Jesus Christ for strengthening him. He humbly acknowledges that he has become a courageous preacher an ambassador for Christ Jesus, not because of any innate natural abilities, but by the power of Jesus Christ. After expressing his gratitude to Jesus Christ our Lord, Paul admits his sins against Jesus Christ and the church to Timothy. Remember, Paul, as a senior pastor and leader, is instructing and challenging a young and inexperienced man, Timothy, on Christian faith. And yet he mentions his past to Timothy. Why does Paul talk about his own shameful past to Timothy? The reason is because he wants to be humble and honest before God and men. He feels that there is no need for him to hide his past sinfulness. He says, I was once a blasphemer, referring to the time when he spoke against Jesus and slandered the name of God. 
By doing so, he has broken the commandment of not taking the name of the Lord in vain, when instead he should have loved the Lord his God with all his heart, soul and mind. He further says, I was a persecutor and arrogant. In other words, by inciting acts of hatred and cruelty against fellow human beings, he has failed to observe the commandment of not injuring or killing anyone, when instead should have loved his neighbor as himself. So, Paul sees himself as the worst of all sinners, and at the same time accepts Jesus as the savior of the sinful human race. He says, this saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Paul feels that he does not deserve anything from God, let alone his forgiveness. Yet he believes that God has not condemned him but has rather chosen to extend his mercy and grace to him. Moreover, Paul believes that grace also brings with it faith and love. Faith in Jesus Christ and love for the Lord and his believers whom he formerly hated. Therefore, Paul reminds Timothy and others, if God saves this evil man, he will save anyone who will come to him. But why does God redeem him? Paul says this so that every believer in Jesus Christ would understand how merciful and kind God is to all sinners. What is the message for us? First of all, let us thank the Lord for choosing us to be his followers. Often we are tempted to think that we have chosen him. No, God has chosen us to be the believers of Christ for a mission. Second, God calls all of us in spite of our sins. We often seem to think that God calls only those who are really good and deserving. No, God calls especially the sinners and unworthy people. The Bible is full of accounts of God calling unworthy men and women to do his work. Prophet Isaiah feels unworthy in the presence of the Lord. John the Baptist thinks of himself unworthy to even unfasten the sandals of our Lord. Third, God has the power to transform all of our lives. There are so many amazing stories of God's saving power. For example, in the Bible, we have the story of the tax collector Matthew, the blind man Bartimaeus, the Samaritan woman at the well, Zacchaeus the rich man, Cornelius the soldier, and so on. Of course, Paul is an important example for all those who come to believe in the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. If we have not experienced any transformation so far, then perhaps we lack the special grace of Christ. If we desire to obtain the fullness of grace, we must humbly worship and love the Lord with all our heart, soul and mind. Fourth, let us not be afraid to admit our faults and sins and ask for forgiveness from our Lord Jesus. Jesus died on the cross to atone for all of our sins. There is no reason to hide our sinfulness because Jesus forgives us for our sins. We don't have to pretend to be something we are not. When we admit we are sinners, we are admitting that we need Jesus. Fifth, we are not here because we are worthy to be here. 
We are here because we realize we are unworthy. We are here because we need Jesus. We need His forgiveness. We are here because we realize we need something that the world cannot give us. And someone besides our parents, brothers and friends. Jesus says, Peace I give to you. My own peace I give you. A peace which the world cannot give. This is my gift to you. Jesus further says, Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Friends, we are here because we need Jesus. We need peace. We need rest. Jesus invites us to come to him as we are. Receive forgiveness for our sins and to obtain eternal life. Today, let our prayer be, Lord Jesus, I truly believe in you. I accept you. Please come into my life. I commit myself to you. Amen. God bless you.